Welcome back, friends. Uh, today we'll start with the issue of shares. This is one of the most conceptual chapters in the whole of accountancy. If you understand it properly, this will become a favorite chapter. If you don't, uh, it's going to be a little difficult for you. But uh, be rest assured, once uh, you watch all the lectures in this chapter, this will become a strong suit. I'm going to uh, up upload another five lectures in this chapter. Those five lectures will cover uh, past year questions, PDF, uh, revision test paper, every single thing. Every single concept and every single point will be covered. Don't need to worry. You have to just look at these chapters and these lectures and uh, pay close attention. Nothing else. Now, usually in school, they directly start with entries and they may explain the entries. But the problem is, sometimes in your exams, the examiner may ask something within the same conceptual barrier, but a little different entry. At that time, you'll get started because you're directly started with entries. But how I'm going to uh, structure this lecture is, I'm going to not only tell you what the entries are, but I'm going to explain the why being every entry. Once that is clear, every other question will become easy. So uh, before we start, let's say, for example, you have a brilliant business idea, uh, say in the telecom industry. So the problem with that is, there are major players in the telecom industry and usually you know, for a business to succeed in such a competitive industry, uh, you need a lot of investment. So the uh, industry is telecom and for a business to succeed, you need an investment of around 20,000 crores. So this 20,000 crore amount is not a small amount where an individual or even a partnership can invest. So that's the reason why the concept of shares actually came in. In short, for a simplification purpose, let's say you want to raise 1 lakh rupees for starting your business. Under this concept of issue of shares, this 1 lakh rupees is divided into rupees 10. So now you have 10,000 shares. This rupees 10 is the value of each share value per share. It can be 20, it can be 100. That depends. They'll come later in the chapter. But for now, we'll assume that value per share is rupees 10. That is one share is worth 10 rupees. So this 1 lakh rupees when divided by one share of 10 rupees is 10,000 shares. So when you raise 10,000 shares of rupees 10 each, you will get 1 lakh rupees of investment. So now out of this 10,000 rupees, uh, there are three investors. One is you. So you purchase, uh, say, 2,000 shares. So 2,000 shares means 2,000 into rupees 10. This much amount you're spending to purchase each share. So you're, you're spending a total of 20,000 rupees to purchase 2,000 shares of the business. Okay. Now, uh, another investor called A and there's another called B. A purchases 5,000 shares and B purchases 3,000 shares. Now the total 10,000 shares is purchased. So A will give 50,000 rupees and B will bring in 30,000 rupees to the business. So the entire share capital has been raised, right? Now what does this actually mean? This means that you own 20% of the business, A owns 50% of the business and B owns 30% of the business. That's what it actually means. 30% why 3,000 divided by 10,000 shares is 30 percentage. And 30,000, another way, 30,000 divided by 1 lakh rupees share capital you need to raise is 30 percentage. So that's how the uh, division of profit sharing ratio is decided when it comes to this. Wait, whatever doubt you have in mind, keep it with you. By the end of this lecture, everything will be cleared. I'm going in a sequential manner because uh, I'm going to tell you things that you need to know only at the right time. So wait. So this is the basic concept. So now what will happen? Once this is done, a balance sheet is prepared. So in the balance sheet, uh, it's usually bank. So bank, you actually raise 1 lakh rupees. And in this, the liability side, actually your owners, right? So A, B, and you, 
you are the three owners so it's actually capital you have gone through the partnership lecture so capital of a b and u so it will be 50000 rupees 30000 rupees and 20000 rupees now both sides are tally this is the basic concept both sides are tally uh, 1 lakh rupee is raised by bank and uh, a contributes 50000 b contributes 30000 and uh, u contributes 20000 that is the example we read above so now but the problem with this part is now i just told you there are 10000 shares so the it has been divided between three people now in this example if i say there are 100 million shares or uh, 100 into 10 lakh shares uh, three people won't have enough money to subscribe those money subscribe to those money shares so it may be a b c d e f g until z there may be hundreds of subscribers and uh, accountancy is an art so you can't mention every subscriber's name in the balance sheet as your uh, capital account so what do companies usually do? Companies avoid writing the names in the balance sheet and they write a name called share capital and they write the total value of shares raised as capital. So 1 lakh rupees. Now, when you need to know who are the people who subscribe to the share capital, then the company has a separate register called the share capital register under which these things are mentioned like A, B and U. So A purchased 50,000 shares, B purchased 30,000 shares and U purchased 20,000 shares. Not 20,000 shares, 50,000 rupees worth shares, 30,000 rupees worth shares and 20,000 rupees worth of shares. So in here, in the balance sheet side, only 1 lakh will be mentioned. But if you want to know who are the people who subscribe to the shares, you have to go open a register called share capital register. In that individual will be mentioned. But as a whole, share capital is the word that will be mentioned in the liability side of the balance sheet. Clear? This is the basic concept. Now, instead of delaying, let's start with question because uh, I need you to understand it fully. So, uh, as far as questions are concerned, let's start with the first sum. Go. I'll project the questions, but it's better to have a soft copy or a hard copy of the PDF given below. These are the same questions given in the PDF. So, in the first question, it says ABC Limited issued 20,000 shares of rupees 10 each, payable as follows on application 2, on allotment 3, on first call 4, on final call 1. Public applied to for 20,000 shares. And these are the two people who applied. This is just an example. That's why only two are mentioned. There will be hundreds of people who apply. But for the for full understanding of the concept, this question is taken. Now, money dues on various calls were received except X who failed to pay both calls money. Thereafter, his shares is forfeited and rupees 10. Now, every single concept is covered in this question. Now, I'm going to explain each and every part of this question so that from the next questions, you will be doing it with me. And you may finish it before me also. But pay close attention. Once you understood this sum fully, every other sum will be simplified. Now, don't worry, I have not even started explaining it. So you may not even understand a single term. That's normal. Every term will be explained in this chapter. Now let's start. ABC Limited is the company's name. So issued 20,000 shares of rupees 10 each. What does this mean? That is the board of directors decided to raise 2 lakh rupees. That is 20,000 into 10. So to, in order to raise this 2 lakh rupees, they decided to... Uh, value each of their shares at rupees 10. So when 2 lakh you divide by 10, you get 20,000 shares. So the company wants to raise 2 lakh rupees by issuing 20,000 shares. So essentially it wants to sell its 20,000 shares and it wants public to buy those shares and become part owners of the business. As simple as that. So now before I jump on to the next uh, term, I explained what uh, the concept of share, issue of shares. Now, what is the definition of shares? That is when someone comes and asks you, what does a share mean? What will you tell him? As simple as that, just tell him this. A share is when a company's capital is divided into small parts. Each of the small parts 
that is each share is called a share each when the company share capital is divided into small parts each of these small parts is called a share any other doubt be patient it will be explained by the end of this lecture now you observe here right i have written share capital here instead of just capital why share capital is just a name given to uh, the capital of a listed company or any uh, a company form a private or a public company because there are millions of people who subscribe to it so that's the reason why share capital comes into place instead of share, instead of capital now the next part of the question here it says there are uh, the this 10 rupees is paid in four parts so act, what is this four parts actually mean before that i need you to understand a single thing usually in india whenever uh, a company wants to raise uh, shares it is assumed that 90% of the people who subscribe to uh, shares in india are uh, from middle class so that's why they are given an option to raise shares in installment basis there is first you pay 2 then you pay 3 then you pay 4 then you pay 1 of each share this total will be equal to 10 to be 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 1 The for these are the four installments. The first installment is always called application. The second installment is called allotment. Third is called first call. Fourth, in this case, is called final call. The installments name may be different, but the concept is these are just installments. Now, another question I get at this time is: here it is first call and final call. The question is: will there only be four calls or will there only be four installments always? now to answer it always keep this in mind there can be hundreds of installments is the company's discretion you don't have to pay attention to it now if tomorrow the company wants to uh, raise this uh, same amount but it gives an option for five installments so assuming first installment you need to pay 2 second 2 third you have to pay 1 uh, rupee fourth installment you have to pay 3 rupees and fifth installment you are paying 2 rupees so always remember the first two installments these names will be standard the first installment is always called application the second installment is always called allotment from the third installment you call them first call then second call and the last installment is always called final call now if there six installment it will be first call second call third call then final call these two names will be common always and the final call's name will be common other than that it can be how many number of calls now basic concept understood now these calls are usually these installments are actually uh, paid at different points of time like after few months so there is it becomes easier for people to subscribe so that they don't default don't allow any other doubt to come in your mind for now this con this much is enough for the concept right now then now they say public applied for 20000 shares so why did i say applied for 20000 shares here it says the company issues 20000 shares here it says the public applied for 20000 shares so what does it actually mean that is here the company wants to sell 20000 shares to the public in this case they are telling the public applied for the whole of 20000 shares but always keep this in mind the public can apply for more or less it may apply for 30000 shares or it may apply for 10000 shares it may apply for more or less these two are different concepts issued means the number of shares the company wants to sell or the company has right now to sell public applied means the number of shares the public is interested to buy in this question both are equal that the public wants to buy the number of shares the company wants to sell but it may be different for different cases all these cases will be covered in the next questions but for whole concept you need to understand only this much now there may be hundreds of people who want to buy so uh, 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 from the public here it says only x and y are applying so there may be hundreds of people but in this question for complete conceptual clarity purpose i'm telling only two people from the public applying out of the two people x is applying for 20 12000 shares and y is applying for 8000 shares nobody else has applied so 12000 plus 8000 Twenty thousand shares. So X and Y in total applied for twenty thousand shares. This this part. Now next part. I have not even started the journal entry. I am just explaining the question right now. The journal entry and the concept is just after five minutes. 
no next but money dues and various calls were received except x who failed to pay both call money there are three charges of forfeit hmm now pay attention here there are two people who applied for shares right x and y so there are four installment one is application another one is allotment another first and then the final installment is called uh, final call now the value of each installment application x needs to pay 2 rupees y also needs to pay 2 rupees allotment x needs to pay 3 rupees y also needs to pay 3 rupees but these are common it's for both of them it's for everybody in the public and first call x needs to pay 4 rupees y also needs to pay 4 rupees final call x needs to pay 1 rupee y also needs to pay 1 rupee now if you have any doubt in your mind right now this suppress it because by the end of this sum everything will be clear but right now i have gone through the same step so i know what doubts will come in mind that every doubt is answered so don't worry this try your best to focus it now these are the four installments that x and y to y should pay it doesn't matter the number of shares for each share they need to pay this installment that is x is actually applying for 12000 shares so x needs to pay 12000 in total 12000 into 10 he needs to pay 1 lakh 20000 rupees so he is applying for 8000 shares so in total he needs to pay 8000 into 10 80000 rupees now in total he needs to pay 10 rupees per share here first the company will tell x to pay 2 rupees on the 10 rupees so on in the beginning uh, the company has x to pay 12000 into 2 24000 In the beginning, why should pay eight thousand into sixteen thousand? In total, it will be twenty thousand into ten. Two lakh rupees will be raised. But these are the different installments. Other than that, the concept is the same. Now, as far as this part of the question, are they say money dues on various calls were received except X who failed to pay both calls money. So this actually means first installment X paid, Y also paid. Second installment X paid, Y also paid. now third installment x didn't pay fourth installment also x didn't pay but y paid both this what this actually question or this uh, term actually means there is a money dues on various calls were received that is the money that the x and y needed to pay for different installments were received by the company except from x who didn't pay these two calls money if x didn't pay these two calls money is selling except x that means y paid all four four calls money that's what it means because except x every other money was received so that means y paid every installment x didn't pay these two he paid the first two because it says only both calls money so call money means first call and final call application allotment money was paid that's how you have to assume now there after is shares are forfeited now what is this forfeited actually mean now you need to understand what is written in the company act they don't explain these things clearly that's the reason for confusion in the future now i am going to tell you everything that you need to know now under companies act the directors of the company have an option the directors have an option that as and when any subscriber fails to pay an installment the directors will give a 7 days notice to the subscriber tell, telling them that see sir you didn't pay the installment so i'm giving you 7 days notice if you can pay your installment amount in those 7 days after receiving this notice i it's fine you can keep the shares but in case you're not paying i'm going to cancel your shares that is i'm going to take the shares from you and i won't return the money you already paid also take the shares from you means i'm going to cancel your name from the shares register share capital register see basically what i'm telling you is as and when a person pays the first installment pays application money he become the owner of the company after that he needs to pay install uh, he need to pay further installments wait wait you just oh, keep keep what i told you right now in mind while doing the sums this will become clear as and when a person pays the first installment it's always assumed that yes he become the owner of the money but in order to become complete owner he is just a partial owner he needs to pay all installments now in this case now for example let's take this case forget about the question now i didn't call the final call amount 
idn call means there are only uh, there are four installments but now only third installment is asked fourth installment is still not demanded uh, because, uh, during the uh, calling of the third installment y paid the amount but x did not pay the amount so the directors had an opportunity here to send a notice to x telling that you pay within seven days or get lost but the directors didn't do it here is the director discretion as to when they can do it if the directors have, would have done it here then we would have forfeited the shares of x after the third installment itself but the directors didn't do it that's why after that another installment was called by the directors without giving notice to x which is called the final call and since x didn't pay the final call amount also then the directors must have given 7 days notice saying that pay within 7 days i should have given you notice only before like before the last installment because you wouldn't pay the third installment itself but i waited patiently for another installment assuming you'll pay you didn't pay now i've lost my patience so i am going to give you 7 days notice if you don't pay within the 7 days i am going to cancel your name from the share capital register that's what the shareholders will tell in the notice now here they are telling the shares are forfeited so this means even after giving 7 days uh, notice x didn't pay the amount so what does this mean that means from the share capital register x's name was cancelled it was taken out and the money the that is the first two installment which were paid by x that will also not be returned to x this is the right given to directors of the company by the companies act there's no other reason so this is what it means now wait while doing the entries it become much more clear but i'm just providing you basic clarity right now because while doing the entry it become easier for you to understand now these shares were reissued at rupees 7 as fully paid up now what does this mean here i am telling i cancel the shares of x so i cancel the name of uh, x from the register so 12000 of the shares were cancelled x who was considered a part owner of 12000 shares before since he didn't pay two installments his name was cancelled that means the 12000 shares which of which he was a part owner now is not a part owner so this 12000 share is remaining with the company still if x paid fully x would have gotten it no, but x paid two installment of which he was a part owner he didn't pay the rest of the installment so x's name was cancelled on the books and this 12000 shares gets returned to the company so now reissued means this 12000 shares were then reissued means sold to some other person the name is not given it can be z or it can be any other name it can be any other person and it was reissued at rupees 7 that's what this concept actually says now another question i get here is in the beginning i told abc limited issued 20000 shares at rupees 10 each okay you cancelled uh, 12000 shares of x because he didn't pay installment but now instead of uh, issuing at uh, rupees 10 you're issuing the shares at rupees 7 each why now wait to understand this you need to understand the concept and the sums that i do right now all i'll say is wait wait till the end of this lecture i'm not telling you the reason of why it is issued at 7 and not 10 i know this is the doubt you have in mind but be patient with the doubt i'm going to start the sums now so in order to understand the entire journal entries i'm going to give you we're going to try a new method that is here i'm going to create a balance sheet and before and after each journal entry we're going to see if both sides of the balance sheet are tallying see if both sides don't tally that means the entries are wrong but if both sides are tallying that means your body have done is right so after each and every entry before and after each and every entry we'll check if the balance sheet is tallying given the uh, as per the question now this will make your concept extremely thorough and clear so always keep something in mind whenever you solve a issue or shares question see in this question itself there are numerous things you need to keep in mind so it's always better to write down small small points before you start question start the question so that you don't need to refer to the question again because there are chances that you may miss some point within the question if you don't make short short notes so what do i mean by short notes now this is the question that i gave you so short note means 
this is the format you need to always write. Always follow this format while solving any question. Applied allotted 20,000. 20,000. Now, look at the question. This question says 20,000 shares were issued by the company and 20,000 shares was applied by the public. This applied means applied by the public. Always write this, write what I'm going to write now before every question. Your concept and your question will be completely clear. And only after you write this, you can finish it. Because see, you may spend another three minutes to write this, uh, the question in the short form. But you'll save 15 minutes from your uh, journal entry transactions. That's the reason why I'm telling you this is always a better bet. Now, public, this applied means public applied 20,000 shares. And the company that is issued, the company allotted 20,000 shares. Allotted, issued, same thing. For now, you keep that in mind. Allotted and issue are the same thing. This is, this is the first step you need to write before solving any question. Now, for better clarity, you write out of the public who applied, out of the 20,000, X applied 12,000 shares and Y applied for 8,000 shares. Correct. Now, next part. You write X and Y here and you write down the installments, application, 2 rupees, allotment, 3 rupees, first call, 4 rupees, final call, 1 rupee. And you put the stigma. The stigma signifies that X paid the first uh, installment and Y also paid the first installment. X paid the second installment. Y paid the second installment. X didn't pay the third installment. Y paid the third installment. X didn't pay the fourth installment. Y paid the fourth installment. Then after this, under X, you write total 10 because this total installment value is 10 rupees. So X you write forfeited and reissued at rupees 7 per share. So, if you look here, the entire question has been summarized here. This is the entire question, right? Company issued 20,000 shares. Public applied for 20,000 shares. Out of the 20,000, these are the two people who applied. X needed to pay this many installments. Y needed to pay this many installments. Y paid all. X paid first two. Y didn't pay second two. And... Uh, I mean, X, X didn't pay the second two. Total installments value was 10 rupees per share. Now, X was forfeited and reissued at 7 rupees per share. This was the total question. Now, it's summarized. Now, all you need to do is look at this this uh, summarization you prepared. Then look at each question. Instead of reading it, we just need to put a glance here. Okay. Now, let's start solving. Now, I am going to solve the question here. The journal entry should be here. But the concept will be explained here in the balance sheet. Right? So, let's start. First part. X and Y paid application money. So, what does this application money and application installment actually mean? Now, whenever a person, like for example, I'm, I want to uh, hold a share of Reliance. So, in the context of this chapter, keep this in mind. If I, were, if I want to purchase a share, and they are telling these are the four installments and these are the amounts you need to pay against each installment. Whenever I want to apply, it becomes necessary for the pe person who to apply to pay application money. That is, I can just send a form or send a mail to the company that I want to apply for shares. How will the company know I seriously want to apply? In order to check the seriousness of the person who is applying, they tell them to send rupees to, in this case, an application money for each shares you want to apply to check the seriousness. So once I want to apply, I'll send application money also in respect of the number of shares I want to apply. And the company will know, yeah, he's, uh, he's actually a serious bidder. 
and he wants to apply seriously <clears throat> now what will be the balance sheet uh, balance sheet impact here now x and y paid to rupees each application money so x and y bank first two rupees mean x wanted to purchase 12000 rupees so each for each share he pays 2 rupees so 12000 rupees into 2 and 8000 rupees into 2 so x pays 24000 rupees correct so x will pay 24000 and y will pay 16000 totally it assume that they pay by bank so they transfer this much amount along with a letter saying that i want to apply you keep this picture in mind now x and y want to apply x and y send a letter that i x sends i want to apply for 12000 y sends i want to apply for 8000 and for to uh, make sure that you think i'm serious i'm going to send you the application money along with it since i'm going to apply for 12000 shares i'm sending 12000 into 2 rupees for application i'm sending 24000 rupees to you bank transfer and y is telling i'm sending 60000 rupees to you 8000 into 2 correct now both sides are tallying here another question i get here is i told you that uh, for a share, share capital like a company there may be hundreds of owners so it's an accounting is an art so you don't write the name of each owner correct you write share capital instead of it but you are just applying right the comp- only of the company says yes i accept you as a shareholder and i allot the shares to you you become the owner then your name will come under share capital now you are just applying the company you are just giving the money and you are applying the company has not accepted you so now your your name is treated as an outside liability there is the company receives 40000 rupees from x and y who are the applicants they are not the owners so again but one point of what you told was correct that is there may be hundreds of people who apply you don't write hundreds of people's name even though they are not owners so what do you write simple instead of x and y you write share application account and you write 40000 year you don't write x and y's name you write share application account and you write 40000 year it is the same concept when you are the owner you write share capital account and in the share capital registered the name of each and owner and the amount contributed by him will come as explained before but now you are this applicants so you write share application account and the total of the share application account will get recorded here 40000 totally and there will be a separate register called share application register where it will be mentioned X applied for twenty-four thousand rupees worth of application money he paid, and Y paid sixteen thousand rupees worth of application money. So X applied for twelve thousand rupees or twelve thousand shares, and Y applied for eight thousand shares. This will be mentioned in the share application register. Correct. So twelve thousand into two twenty-four thousand rupees was contributed by X. Eight thousand into two sixteen thousand rupees was contributed by Y. This is the basic concept. Now both sides are tallying. This this is the first entry. Now let's go into journal entries. So what is the journal entry? I told you what is the first journal entry. This is the solution. Solution. The first journal entry is what bank first journal entry is uh, X and Y paid application money. Bank account debited. Totally forty thousand rupees. came into the bank account of the company and to x account who paid 24000 rupees since he is not the owner his name is coming is an outside liability and y account 16000 rupees correct i also explained that there may be hundreds of people who apply you don't write every single person's name even though they are not owners and instead of this there is a separate account called share application account 40000 and this x and y's name will come in the register of share application account so the actual entry is bank account debited to share application account this is the first entry clear
This is the purpose of the first entry. Now, let's go to the second part. Now, the company received uh, share applications worth uh, 40,000 in total. So, X and Y applied. So, what this company does is uh, after uh, some days, it says that, okay, I'm ready to uh, partially make you owner. Like, okay, I'm confirming that I give you shares. That is, you're the part owner. So, now X and Y becomes part owner. Now, even though they are part owners, it the share is assumed to be given to them. They need to pay full amount. They are part owners, but still they are owners. So, because of that, the share will be given to them. So, because they are owners now, the company cancels this, this name of share application account and transfer the 40,000 rupees into an account called share capital account. Now, share application account was created in order to keep a note of people who are applying. It's a temporary account. Now, the company has made X and Y part owners. It has agreed to their application. It's confirmed that, yes, you have become part owners. So the next entry is once it confirms their part owners, now this 40,000 rupees in this account will get transferred to share capital account. Correct? And this X and the share application account will be completely closed. And this new account of share capital account will get open in this 40,000 rupees from the share application account will get transferred to share capital account. So net effect 40,000 will remain in the business. Only account's name is shifting. First it was share application account in the credit side and bank in the debit side. Now the same instead of share application account, the entire 40,000 comes in share capital account in the credit, uh, credit side and bank in the debit side. Credit side means liability side, debit side means asset side. For now keep in mind. Um, no, you don't need to know that. Just in the liability side, is share capital account and in the asset side is bank account. Okay? Clear? Now, you can say that, yeah, but I mentioned X and Y were mentioned in the share capital register, right? Saying they contributed 24,000 and uh, 16,000 each. What will happen to them? Nothing. That register will get closed and this new register, meaning share capital register that I mentioned before, will be open where we mentioned X contributed 24,000 and Y contributed 16,000. So he acts as the part owner of 12,000 shares. Y is the part owner of 8,000 shares. This will be mentioned in the share capital register. Share application register will be closed. Now, again, the reason why share capital is mentioned is there may be hundreds of uh, names. And uh, the hundreds of names won't be mentioned here. So it will be a share capital register will be open. That name should be mentioned there. Uh, saying the uh, amount contributed and the shares, partial share owned by each. And share capital account in totality will be present in the liability side. This is the concept. Now, how do we convert this into entries? Simple. Now, I told you that this share application account will be cancelled. Correct? So what will be the entry? It was in the credit side first. Now it's cancelled. It will be share application account debited 40,000 to share capital account 40,000. Is this the entry for transfer? First, it was the bank account, uh, got, like it was in the share application account first. Now, from the share application account, the entire amount is getting shifted to share capital account. They become owner. If you see the net impact, it's bank account debited to share capital account. Why? This and this is getting cancelled. So, ultimately, it's bank account debited to share capital account. Now, the question is, why can't it directly do bank account debited to share capital account? The reason you will understand the reason only after you do certain sums. But for now, since you asked, I will give a small reason. In the concept here, I told you first X and Y applied. 
and then uh, the company after a few days tell you, yeah, I confirm that it become owners. What do the company confirms only X to be the owner and Y says, no, I don't want you to be the owner. The company can say, there are only few reason, reasons why it can say, they'll come in the next questions. But if the company can say, I want to allot shares only to X. So in this case, Y won't be allotted. allotted. Correct? So if Y will not be allotted, Y's amount will not get transferred to share capital account. Now, if we directly put this bank account debited to share capital account, we are not giving the giving a chance for the company to reject someone because you are directly making them owners. Instead of creating a temporary account, then transferring only people whom the share is allotted into share capital account. In this case, both of them were uh, allotted the whole number of shares they applied, but it won't happen in every case. Right now, you keep only this much in mind. Any further question will be explained in the further concept. MC. Your past year question paper, your revision test paper, every other reference material, every question is covered in the PDF and the lecture is given. You don't have to look at any other question. You just need to look at these lectures and just read through the questions before the exams. You can solve any question, even a little complicated and twisted question and be able to solve. Because I'm going sequentially in this in a conceptual way so that everything gets fitted to your mind perfectly. So this is the entry. Now, again, for revision purpose, write this down. The meaning of this entry actually is confirming share allotted. Now, wait. For now, write this down. You're just confirming that the share is allotted. This entry means that. Now, in the, uh, sorry, I forgot to write uh, narrations, right? Being, for the first entry, being application money received. Second entry, being share application money transferred to share capital account. Whenever share capital comes, that means it is the owner's account. You become the owner of the business. That's what share capital account actually means. So this is the first entry. This is what you need to write whenever any question uh, comes. These are the first two entries, irrespective of the question. Now, after this question, you will be able to do it easily, but pay attention right now. Now, next, first question is over. First installment is paid and the company confirms uh, X and Y to become part owners of the business. Correct. Now, few months pass by. Now, it's time for the second installment. X and Y should pay the second installment. So, what does the second installment actually mean? Second installment actually means, now, I'm going to erase all these unnecessary things. Keep only necessary things and board. So, a share capital account is 40,000, bank account is 40,000 till now. This is the first installment. Now, it's time for the second installment. Now, in the second installment, what does it mean? That means for the second installment, X should pay 3 rupees each. One. X and Y should pay 3. That is, X should pay. 3 rupees per share. So he needs to pay 36,000 rupees. For the whole of 12,000 shares, he needs to pay 12,000 into 3, 36,000. And why? For the whole of 8,000 shares, he needs to pay 24,000 rupees. That is 8,000 into 3. This is 3. Okay. Now, what will be the uh, impact on the balance sheet now? Again, what will be the impact? See, before you tell me the impact, I want you, I want to tell you something very important. During the first installment, the company did not allow, make them owners directly. They are just receiving application money. At that time, the company didn't even know there's a person called X and Y. So that's why they, for the first entry was bank amount received to know if uh, X and Y were serious owners, serious applicants. And then the X and Y were made part owners. Now, this X and Y are owners of the company right now. 
so because x and y becomes owners they have right over the business at the same time the business also has right over x and y why it's a company a company and its owners are separate people separate legal entity concept so a company has right on its owner so because it has right on its owner so what does the company actually do here the company now demands the next installment from the owner the first installment could not be demanded because x and y were not owners at the time but now x and y were owners so the company demands this amount from its owners what do you mean by demands that means uh, see here it's uh, 36000 right and here is 24000 so 60000 so demands actually means the company wants to increase x and y's account in total by 60000 rupees for that because it demands uh sorry because it demands the company increases x and y's name as assets in its books now what is the meaning of this impact actually the company now has a right to demand the next installment from x and y this is the impact for the demanding part what is the impact for demanding part here x needs to pay 36000 rupees for 12000 and y needs to be 24000 rupees so in total 60000 rupees needed need to be included into the business so the company has a right to demand the 60000 so because x are already uh, x and y are already owners it demands to increase more 60000 to the share capital account that is x and y's account and since this is the entry for demanding and both sides should tally it's increasing x and y as an asset and it's making x pay 36000 rupees and y pay 24000 rupees so x and y needs to pay 36000 and 24000 uh into the business so that 60000 rupees increases in the share capital this is actually the meaning of the next entry now how does this entry actually work let's go to the journal entry part first entry is a clear right now next entry will be clear right now wait next entry is all is one of the most new concepts after that all the entries are the same now third entry is the entry to demand mon- the next installment from x and y so what is the demand entry normally how do you do it you demanding a payment from someone so x and y x account debited 36000 y account debited 24000 to Share capital account sixty thousand. Correct. Now the company wants to increase its share capital by sixty thousand, and since there are only two owners, it is demanding X to pay thirty six thousand. That is the entire installment. That is each three rupees for its twelve thousand shares thirty six thousand, and it is demanding Y to pay. Three rupees for each of us eight thousand shares supply. That is eight thousand shares allotted by the company. So twenty four thousand. So the entry for demanding is this. Now again, there will be hundreds of owners. So the names won't be mentioned like this. So instead of X and Y, an actual entry is share allotment. Account debited sixty thousand. Correct. Why is the share allotment account? Share allotment is the name of the next installment. The name of the first installment was share application. That account was created. Name of the second installment was share allotment. So under share allotment, there will be a share allotment register under which it will be mentioned how much the company demands from X and how much the company demands from Y. So now let's go to the balance sheet. in the balance sheet will be share allotment and 60000 will be total and 60000 will be returned here in the asset side 
So now also both sides tally. 40,000 plus 60,000. 40,000 plus 60,000. Both sides are tally. This entry is thorough. Now, this is the entry for demanding money. Now, X and Y should pay money also, right? Look at the question. The question actually says X and Y paid both installments right on time. So, now when X and Y pays both installments, what is the actual meaning? What will be the impact on the balance sheet then? For now, you are just demanding money. So, it will be X and Y. Right. Bank. And finally, it will be share allotment. 60,000. This is the entry for demanding money. Now, X and Y want to pay that amount. After uh, the company passes the demanding uh, entry, now X and Y says, that, okay, we'll pay the amount. So what happens then? This amount will get transferred. They will get this account will get cancelled and bank account comes in. Because the claim, X and Y are assets now. Now their assets get reduced. Instead of the asset, X and Y are bringing in bank. So bank gets increased by another 60,000. This is the meaning of the entry. As simple as that. Under this entry, X and Y were demanded by the company to bring in 36,000 and 24,000 to increase their share capital by 60,000. Since X and Y name will not be written separately, share allotment was created. Now share allotment, now it is the demanding entry. So now sure, X and Y says, okay, we'll pay. So if they pay, they bring in bank, they bring in money, that is bank, 60,000. Since they bring in money, their names will get cancelled from the business. They are no longer assets because they bought in bank. Now, because they are no longer assets, share allotment, that is their name, gets reduced by 60,000. Again, look at this net impact. First share account was debited, now it's credited. So bank account debited to share capital account. That is the net impact. Second case also, the net impact is the same. But still you're doing it for clarity purpose, for concept purpose. Now, the same question can come. Why can't we do the entry directly? It is the same answer as before. You don't know how many people they're going to... There may be many changes in basically in the second entry. All these are just bifurcations of this entry that you'll know in the next questions. For now, always follow this method and this concept and go in the same sequence. You'll never get confused. So narration part. Let's write down the narration. Being allotment money made due. Who makes it due? Company makes it due. Company is a separate entry. Entity. It makes the owner due to pay the share capital amount. That's what it actually means. Now, money received against allotment. Done. These are the third and fourth entries. So second installment also is thorough now. Now, in case, see, if you have a doubt regarding the conceptual part, don't worry, how much I've taught you, that's all you need to keep in mind now. Rest as and when we do more questions, everything will be thorough. But if you keep this concept in mind, the rest questions will become very, very easy. Now, I can't explain the full thing here because it will lead to confusion. I'm going to tell you only what you need to understand and I'll tell everything at the right time. And But however, if you have any doubt with the journal entries, that is, you're not sure why this is debited, why this is credited, then may be sure to look at my journal entry lecture. Uh, if you are read under me, then you will be able to understand easily. But if you are not, if you have some confusion in the journal entry, go look at my journal entry lecture. It's given in the YouTube. It's a demo video. You read that video, that's enough. And if you have more doubts, you uh, text me. I'll give you the other videos also for journal entry. Now, second aspect is done. So what is the net impact in the business right now? Net impact in the business right now is uh, bank 60,000. So
net impact in the business is share capital is 1 lakh because it was 40,000 plus 60,000 and bank first it was 40,000 then more 60,000 was bought in so 1 lakh both sides are tally and these two are over first two installments now only two more are left now comes the harder part of the transaction but it will be easier for you now now it's time for the company to claim its third installment now when I say third installment the company, the X and Y paid the entire amount in the first two, but X made a default in the third installment. So this will be a little different type of entry than the regular one, regular two that were mentioned above. So now again, X and Y are the part owners of the business. Now the company should make an entry where X and Y becomes due again. Company makes X and Y due to pay the third installment. What is third installment amount? Four, four. So X pay it needs to pay forty thousand, forty eight thousand, and Y needs to pay thirty two thousand. Totally eighty thousand needs to be paid into the business. So now the company has X and Y owners have a right over X and Y. So the company makes an entry where eighty thousand should be increased in the share capital of X and Y. And now the company is making X and Y due. Why due? You can write X and Y here, but since uh, again, I told you since X and Y is named, there are millions of people from whom the company makes it uh, makes uh, them due to pay the share capital amount. So instead of uh, writing X and Y separately, you just write share first call and you write 80,000. Under the share first call, register X and Y is due amount will be mentioned. That is 48,000, 32,000. Correct? Now clear? This is the en uh, entry to make it due. Now same. Always be, um, uh, let's, let's go to the journal entry, then I'll explain this concept further. Now, fifth question. Fifth point. Same as the fourth point. The uh, entry for making it due. How do you make it due? First, share. First, Call account debited eighty thousand two share capital account eighty thousand. Now, for conceptual sake, I'm going to mention like this. How does eighty thousand X needs to pay forty eight thousand and Y is due thirty two thousand. Just for this, you don't need to mention this in the exam. But for conceptual clarity of the next uh, entry, I have written this. Now, this is the net impact. This is the entry to make the next uh, installment due. This is what happens. So, what actually happens now? So, after a few days, now it's time for due entry is done. So, it's time for X and Y to actually make the actual payment into the business. So, what does X and Y do? It's already mentioned in the question that X does not pay the third installment, but Y pays the third installment. Correct? So, if Y just uh, always first write what you know. Any doubts, we can solve it later. Now, why pay third installment? What happened to the balance sheet? 32,000 will get reduced. That is Y's amount. Y's amount, the Y's amount that's mentioned in the share first call register will get, its claim will get reduced by 32,000 and the bank account will increase by 32,000. Are you able to understand what I'm telling you here? I'm just telling you that in the uh, share first call register, it was mentioned X should pay 48 and Y should pay 32. But now since Y has paid the amount, X didn't pay, but we will do what we know first. Y has paid the amount. So Y paid the amount what Y should pay, that due will get reduced. So 32,000 will get reduced from share first call register. And since 32,000 is increasing the bank, 32,000 will increase in the uh, bank account. This is what it means. Now what will be the entry? Again, sixth entry. Bank increases by 32,000. And two share first call 
account thirty-two thousand. Correct. Now wait, wait. Now next part. Still forty-eight thousand. That is excess due amount is yet to be received in the bank account of the company. But they say X does not pay. If X does not pay, see till now X has been good. So we gave him a respectable name saying share first call, share allotment, share obligation. But now we know X is not going to pay. So no longer we are going to give respect to him. So what we'll do is we'll reduce this 48,000 from share first call register. We'll cancel this name also. But we'll write another name called calls in arrears and write 48,000 against it. Calls in arrears. In the calls in arrears register, you write X and I and you write 48,000 against uh, a due amount from X in calls in arrears. Share first call is a very respectable name, but now X is no longer respectable. So you transfer the 48,000 due from X and into you give them another name called calls in arrears. That's what happens. This 48,000 is reduced in the asset side and a new 48,000 gets added by another account name. Bal balance sheet is going to tally, but the name is different. Calls in arrears is just the name of the defaulting party. That's it. Now, let's uh, make it neat. So, we'll write this entry also. Now, uh, let's uh, solve this entry. Now, 48,000 is reduced from share capital against next. When 48,000 is added to calls in arrears. Now, how do we do it? Two. Share capital. Share first call. Account forty eight thousand and calls in arrears account debited forty eight thousand. Correct. Now, if you look here, essentially these are same. That is thirty two thousand from the share cap for fair first call account in the asset side gets reduced and that gets transferred to bank account. 32,000 and remaining 48,000 gets reduced from share first call account and it gets transferred to calls in arrears account. That is the meaning of this entry. Now, why are you writing share first call account separately two times? So, better what we'll do is we'll write share first call account 80,000 directly. Essentially, 80,000 share first call, which was written here, gets converted, gets cancelled here, the entire. And once it gets cancelled, some comes into bank account and some goes into another default account, here X. This 48,000 will call in arrears, the name is shifted to call in arrears. This 30,000 bank comes in. This is the net impact, correct? This is, the, this is where the concept lies. If you understood this point, cool. We don't go through this point again because the next point is also the same thing. But the more uh, clearly you understand in the beginning, the more easy it will become for you. Now, again, let's make it neat. What is the net, net new impact now? Share first call account get reduced. And Now, tomorrow, when, whenever you do some question and you get stuck in some question, which is impossible because every single question that the examiner can think of, I'm going to do it here. But in case you get stuck, then you always draw this balance sheet and check your both sides are tallying and the impact of the uh, entry. You can solve any question like that. Now, what are the impact? Now, 80,000. 1 lakh 80,000. Plus uh, 1 lakh and bank 32,000 gets increased. So, 1 lakh 32,000. And Call scenarios. 48,000. Now there can be hundreds of people who are defaulting. In this case, call scenarios is just the name for X. It can be X, Y, Z, how many other people are defaulting. So call scenarios is a common name for uh, in uh, for uh, keeping people who are defaulted in that account. It's not a respectable name. That's why this comes. Now this entry is done. This installment is done. 
Now let's write the narration for this installment also. Narration is actually pretty simple. Now I want, okay, I hope you're writing with me. Don't wait for me to complete and then write. If you've done it, pause it, go back, write everything, then continue it and write with me. Only if you write with me, you'll understand with me. Now, being next installment made due. Correct. This is the entry we're making due, like the previous entry. First it was share allotment, that installment was made due. Now share first call, this installment was made due. Correct. Now, being share first call account closed. Now see the narration can be anything. Right now I am writing the narration in a very conceptual way. If you want, you can write from this being share first call account 32,000 transferred to bank, 30 to 48,000 transferred to call scenarios. You can write any narration, but concept is more important than the narration. So till now the third entry, third installment point was done. Now it's time for the fourth installment. Now again, let's do let's do the fourth, fourth installment. And what you will see is if for every installment, the balance sheet has tallied for us. So we have made no, no mistake in solving any installment. That's what it actually means. Now, what's the balance sheet is telling? 1,80,000 like year, 1,80,000 like year. Correct? Now, next is time for call, uh, next installment. So, the final amount was 1, one rupees. Now, now, again, the company should make uh, X and Y due for their amount. What is the due amount? 1 rupee. So, 1 rupee, 1 rupee. So 12,000 rupees they need to receive for the final installment and 8,000 rupees they need to receive for the final installment. Totally they need to receive 20,000 rupees. So the company makes uh, X and Y due. So instead of writing the name, write the name of the final installment, final call account 20,000. You understood this due entry, right? Both sides are telling even now. The due entry is this, the company wants to increase before the company couldn't do anything. Now X and Y are owners. The company has a right over its owners. So the company wants to increase 20,000 rupees share capital of X and Y. For that, it's making X and Y due of 20,000 rupees. So the name of X and Y is giving a share final call here so that both sides tally. That's the reason, meaning of this entry. Now, have you seen here? Even though the X and X defaulted here, the entry for making due is always the same. See, X is going to default even in the final call, but the entry for making due is the same. The entry will differ only for this payment side. Now, go to the final, before question, before uh, part. Here, first thing, share allotment account to share capital account. This is the entry for making it due. After it's made due, the whole bank account was received. Here also, again the same, it was made due. This is the entry for making due. The only difference is here bank account was received. Here certain amount was transferred to bank and certain amount was transferred to call scenarios, the defaulting party. Other than that, the entry we're making due is always the same. Only this entry may vary depending on how much cash is coming in, how much they are defaulting. Now, let's start the seventh entry. Share final call account debited. And again, in the share final call register, X and Y will be written separately. So for now conceptual clarity, X, 12,000 needs to be paid. Y, 8,000 needs to be paid. 20,000. And to make due, the company wants to increase uh, the share capital by 20,000. For that, the company is making X and Y due by 20,000 rupees. Since it can't write X and Y's name separately, it's writing share final call account for totality of due amount. And in share final call register, it mentions how much X should pay, how much Y should pay. Simple. Now, again, here, Y pays the amount and X defaults. So Y pays the amount from share final call account. That is Y's amount is 8,000. See 8,000 here. 
eight thousand is reduced, and he pays the amount means eight thousand will be increased by cash. And again, X defaults, so X is no longer respectable. So the respectable name will be cancelled from X. So this twelve thousand rupees of X will get cancelled, and it will be added to calls in arrears. Now is disrespectful now. Now X name, which was meant, which which was there in uh, final call register, will get reduced totally. And yet X name will this twelve thousand rupees against X name will be added to calls in arrears account, where X is not uh, disrespectful. That's what this entry actually means. Now let's solve the journal entries here. Eighth entry, same. Two. Same the four the full name this share final call account always the name will get fully cancelled. It's always a temporary account. To bank account debited eight thousand. That is why you don't need to write this during exams. This this for your conceptual understanding. After this lecture, I am not going to do this. But once you do this lecture, every other question you will be able to do easily. Then it's only about a muscle memory and small small terms you need to understand. Everything is the same other than that. So calls in arrears increased by twelve thousand. So this calls in arrears is X. This is the entry. Now always understand this. See here, share final call twenty thousand. Share final call twenty thousand. Share first call eight thousand. Share first call eight thousand. Eighty thousand. Same. Share allotment sixty thousand. Share allotment sixty thousand. From the second entry, all these names of the uh, X and Y, the owners, the installments name, the combined name of X and Y is given in, under different heads. First, second installment was called share allotment. Then it was called share capital. Then it was called Share uh, share first call, then it was called share final call. All the installments name that is share allotment, share first call, and share final call will always be credited with the full amount. I've told you the concept, but keep this mind point in mind. If twenty thousand is getting debited here, twenty thousand will get credited in the next entry always for all installments, except share application. This is separate. Uh, concept that I explained before. As and when we do more sums, this will become more thorough. But always keep this in your muscle memory right now. Now this is done. The fourth installment is also done. Correct. Now all the four installments were done. Now let's again see if both sides are tallying for neatness purpose. This name has been completely taken out from the books. Yeah, two lakhs. Then one lakh forty thousand. Sixty thousand. Both sides are tallying. In this case, calls in arrears is just X, but there may be many in other cases. Now, the four installments are done. Now it's time for the next part of the question. What is the next part? Here, X amount X shares are forfeited and reissued at rupees seven per share. This is the next entry. Now the now the video is nearing its final aspects. Pay close attention. What does this actually mean? What is the entry of a forfeited? Now, I'm going to write something here. Don't copy it. After I explain the concept, then copy it. Okay. When I said that when it is forfeited, that means the directors gave X after its second installment default. Seven days time to re to pay the installments. That is the third and fourth installment. That is in this case, first call and second call. X didn't pay. That's why he's getting forfeited. 
So what are the what did I tell you will happen when they forfeit forfeited? That is X shares gets cancelled, and the amount X paid before that is the first two installments value totally for on the twelve thousand shares will not be paid back by the amount he paid before will not be paid back. That that's what will happen whenever a share gets forfeited. So what does it actually mean? Now here the entire twelve thousand rupees was called the entire four installment was called. On this twelve thousand rupees, that is under the share capital X and Y. X claim is one lakh twenty thousand rupees, and Y's claim is eighty thousand rupees. Correct, because the entire amount was added, right? But against this twelve thousand one lakh twenty thousand rupees. X didn't pay sixty thousand, but he paid sixty thousand. But why paid the entire eighty thousand here? This is the bifurcation of the entries right now. This is what has happened. Correct. Because every due entry and every change in uh, bank was made here, but here his entire claim was always added. You see the previous questions, previous concepts are explained. Now, what happens when we forfeit the shares? Forfeit means we cancel excess name from the share capital register. So when we cancel his name from the share capital register, that means the entire one lakh twenty thousand will be cancelled. That's what cancelling name means. So, what is the entry here? Share capital is a liability. It is always credited. Now, since share capital is getting cancelled, share capital is getting reduced. Share capital account debited one lakh twenty thousand rupees. That is the entire claim of X is getting cancelled. Now we have questions related to this journal entry. Go look at the journal entry questions again. You will it'll become clear. Now, after it's getting debited, now we are uh, uh, cancelling excess name from the share capital register. This means that we are telling X we don't want anything to do with you. You have no claim over the business. So once we are given the statement to X that we want nothing to do with you, then the amount is due from him. That is called the arrears due from him. That also we can't claim because we have told him that we want nothing to do with you. So if it's, you have nothing to do with X, then this amount also will get cancelled, right? Because you are telling you want nothing to do with this, nothing of X should be in the balance sheet. So this call scenario is fully worth of X only. So this call scenario is also gets cancelled. So call scenario is was in the asset side, was in the debt. So uh, when it gets reduced, it'll be credited. Two calls. In arrears account sixty thousand, correct. This is what happens. So essentially, we are cancelling one lakh twenty thousand rupees of excess capital from our business. We are cancelling his name, and because we don't have anything to do with X, excess. Uh, from money we need to receive from X, that is calls in arrears. That also we are cancelling. Now balance, there is sixty thousand still left in the credit side, right? What is the name that will come against it? Just think, one lakh twenty thousand rupees is the amount of uh, excess claim in the business. Sixty thousand rupees we need to receive. That means sixty thousand we already received. This sixty thousand is actually part of this, but as for the companies act, we don't have to give him a refund. We can keep that money. We don't have to give him a refund. So because we don't have to give him a refund, now this is actually an income. The sixty thousand is a gain of the business. It's a profit of the business. So the name of the profit you write as share for future account. This is the entry. One lakh twenty thousand claim of X is getting reduced. Sixty thousand that he owes us that also is reduced. But since he already paid a sixty thousand and sixty thousand is remaining here, 
the company give companies have give you special rules of not having the right to not repay the money is already given so this 60000 left over is in the credit side so if it's in the credit side it's assume that it's a gain and it's, it's uh, if you don't want to assume like that you already know that he already paid 60000 and we don't have to give him the 60000 so that 60000 is their gain so the name of the 60000 is share for future account this is the entry now we'll write the entry in this part in the journal entry spot this is the ninth transaction share capital account debited 120000 in the bracket you write 12000 into the total amount total claim of x in the business because this is the total claim he had over the business when now i say total claim that means this entire amount was called keep this called word in mind it will be explained as and when we do the future concepts Now, this twelve thousand out of this twelve thousand shares, whole of ten rupees was called. So, if it's called, the whole of one lakh twenty thousand rupees was added to his claim of the business. That is, is added to his capital in the business. Now, two calls in arrears. Since we are telling, we don't want anything to do with him. If whatever he should pay, that also is getting reduced from our account. Then, finally, for this entry to be completed, the sixty thousand left. The sixty thousand is the gain or the profit of the business. So share for future account. Now write being shares for future. Okay. Now, we completed the nine journal entries here. Now, tenth and eleventh journal entry I want to do in this page because I want to explain along with the balance sheet. Now, let let's clean the balance sheet. Now, what is left in the balance sheet? This one lakh twenty thousand is reduced. This sixty thousand also is reduced, and a new uh, head call share for which is created. Now, let's clean the balance sheet down. Ah, uh, let's erase this part. This entry also is not required anymore now. Calls in arrears also reduced from your bank balance sheet. This entry is already there in the second next page. Now, time to see if the balance sheet is still tally. First, it was two, two lakhs. One lakh twenty thousand of X was read, was uh, cancelled. So the remaining is eighty thousand. So as per the definition, only Y is still the owner. And bank, bank we had one lakh forty thousand left because no nothing was reduced from the bank. Calls in arrears was destroyed. So share for future account was created, which is the asset uh, revenue account or profit account of the business. Under it sixty thousand rupees. Is there? This is the entry. Now, share is forfeited. Now, all this entire twelve thousand shares that was forfeited comes back to the business because it was cancelled from X. It was taken from X and it was bought back to the business. Now, this needs to be reissued at rupee seven. Correct. If it needs to be reissued at rupee seven, what is the entry for reissue at rupee seven? You don't need to follow any other format. The entry for reissue is. They directly go to the uh, market and they find someone and they tell him, "You give me the seven rupees, twelve thousand into seven rupees, and to take the full amount and you take twelve thousand rupees, twelve thousand shares." That's what they say. So what do they do? They go to someone in the market, share capital account, one lakh twenty thousand, bank. Account debit. Wait, wait. I'll tell you the reason for this. Bank account debited twelve thousand into seven, so eighty four thousand rupees. Now, in the question, it is mentioned A B C issue twenty thousand shares rupees ten each. The share amount 
the share value for each share will never get reduced in the business always keep this in mind here again share capital even if you receive even if it's reissued for 1 rupee still here will be 12000 into 10 only this is the claim on the business this amount will always be 12000 shares or how many ever shares is reissued into 10 that is the full face value of the share only will be returned on the credit side against share capital account have no doubt in this but reissued at rupees 7 means they took only 7 rupees for every 10 10 rupee worth shares that is they took 84000 rupees but they gave 1 lakh 20000 rupees claim against the business so what does this mean the company goes to the market telling that you pay me only 7 rupees for every 10 rupees share i'll give you the whole of 10 rupees face value that i'll give you 1 lakh 20000 rupees claim in my business but you need to pay only 84000 rupees worth as what the company is telling now the question is why will a company incur a loss see you see carefully it is not a loss usually reissue is done like this only usually they reissue at lesser rate than the face value always share capital will be added only by the face value bank account only will be uh, reduced by the amount of reissue now the remaining that means as per your logic 36000 rupees is the loss of the business there is 1 lakh 20000 rupees worth of claim of the business they are giving for 80 84 84000 rupees they are taking only 7 rupees for for shares worth 10 rupees now this 30000 is a loss now keep in mind company never does anything for loss so what is this 30000 actually mean usually they do like this for a reissue but they do it because they have a gain of 60000 rupees here right when they forfeited excess shares they received 60000 rupees profit so what they do is from this profit they reduce 36000 rupees this is what the company does so now the company has no loss the person pays less he gains but the company doesn't do it doesn't have any loss why because reissues they always reissue at a lower rate that's the company's policy usually now this is the 10th entry write this down this is the entry for reissue another question i get what if the company uh, issues it at uh, 4 rupees you will issue it at 4 rupees uh, i he pays only 48000 but the loss will be 1 lakh 20000 minus 48000 the loss is 72000 rupees which is more than the 60000 very good question but always keep in mind like i told you the company never does anything for a loss so it never reissues for an amount for a face for a price per share for less than a value for of which this share for future profit account is created there will never incur a loss on a reissue for more than 60000 rupees how much ever balance it has in share for future profit account only that much loss will incur never less never more than that the company will incur loss now let us write down this entry hmm. written down this is the entry for issue so for now the question is actually over every every part is done let's have a look if uh, actually we covered everything issue 20000 four installments are done he didn't ex didn't pay that entry was also done four feet entry was also done reissue entry was also done make entries so it's done but after this there is one final entry that you need to do this entry is compulsory right now let's see again if it's if the entry it's actually tallying the balance sheet so first uh, the share capital was uh, 1 uh, 80000 
now another 1 lakh 20 thousand is added so it's totally 2 lakhs and the bank was uh, 1 lakh 40 thousand before now 84 thousand is added so it's 2 lakh 24 thousand and the balance share for feature account was 60 thousand before 30 thousand of share for feature gets reduced so if uh, 30 thousand get reduced 24 thousand is left still the balance sheet is telling correct now what is the final entry oh, nothing is left but always keep in mind the share for feature is a temporary account like all other installment accounts like i told you this share for feature, for feature can never be carried forward in the balance sheet so this 24 thousand after the shares are reissued, this 24,000 can no longer exist in the business. But since the balance sheet should tally, this should be transferred to another name. So what do they actually do? They transfer this four feature to a more permanent name. Capital Reserve. So the share four feature account is cancelled and that gets transferred to Capital Reserve account. And now this 24,000 gets transferred to Capital Reserve account. Now still the balance sheet tallies, but the name changes from share four feature to Capital Reserve. So what is the entry for that? Share for feature account debited to share capital account 24,000. Done? Entire entries are done. Sorry, not share capital. Thank you for reminding me. It's capital Reserve. Yeah. Now write uh, narration also for this, these two entries. Being shares reissue. Now see, they may cut. If you don't write narration, they may cut half mark. You don't need that. So always you write down the entries first, then spend time for narration in the last, last minutes of the exam. Don't write narrations with each and every entry because you may lose a lot of time. Depending on the time left, you finish it. Because if you don't write narration, they cut only half mark. But if you don't write the entry, then you lose way more. So now, it being share for feature transfer to capital reserve. You write full name. I have just written in short forms. So this is the entire concept of this chapter. Once you understood this concept, I'm pretty sure you would have understood because I went very sequentially and showed you balance sheet tallying in every, every aspect. So there should be no doubt in your question. In case you have any doubts regarding this balance sheet part or any journal entry part, then go to the demo lectures of the journal entries and balance sheet concept that are given in, given in the same channel. So usually people who read under me will not have any doubt in this concept. Now, I'll give you a summary now of what we have done. Summary of the transactions. First, X and Y are the two people who are applied. So if X and Y are applying, you have to show that they are serious. So they directly give the application money. So first the company receives application money directly from them. Since uh, they don't even know X and Y exist, they put it a share application. Uh, the application uh, name of X and Y is um, merged together and its total is written in a share application account. And now, since this entry is for, now the company allots the shares to them. It confirms that now yeah, you have become owner. So the application, which is a temporary account, gets transferred to share capital account. This application account gets transferred to owner's account. Correct. Now the next entry. Now it's time for the company, since now X and Y become part owners, the company has a right to claim or make the next entry due. So the next installment, X wants, the company wants to increase their share capital by 60,000. So they are uh, making X and Y's account due by 30,000, 24,000. Since the name won't be written separately, it's merged together and written under share allotment. Then X and Y pay the amount. So share allotment gets reduced, bank increases. Their claim is reduced and bank account increases, balance sheet tallies. Now, again, the next installment becomes your first call. Now, once it becomes due, always keep in mind the uh, installment account was always reduced. By the in the next entry, so eighty thousand becomes due, then it's reduced in the next entry. So from this eighty thousand that big, uh, that uh, the company has made due, forty eight thousand excess amount they didn't receive. So X means X apostrophe S. That is excess amount. 
I'm not talking about EX, uh, that excess, EX, EX, is not that excess. Now, Y pays bank, so it increases by 33,000. And X didn't pay 48,000, so cost in array increased by 48,000. And share first call account totally gets reduced. Now, next installment made due. Again, X didn't pay is due. Y paid is due. Done. Now, time for four feature. Now, the total claim in excess business gets reduced. X had 12,000 shares and his total called amount was 10 rupees. The entire 10 rupees of the share value was called. His claim was always increased by the entire amount of share value. What he was not given, what he has not given always comes in the debit side. But in the credit side, the entire amount was added to the share capital account. So his entire amount will get reduced now. Since 12,000 shares he applied and 10 rupees full installments were called. So his sum actually in the credit side, 12,000 rupees of the share capital belong to X. Now his excess is X name is completely cancelled from the share register. So 120,000 will get reduced from share capital. So excess, so what X should give us also will get reduced since we don't want anything to do with him. So that uh, asset, that uh, cash call scenarios in the asset side will get reduced by 60,000. And uh, the remaining is the profit of the business because it's in the credit side. Keep in mind, it's credit side, so always it's profit. In other words, out of 1 lakh 20,000 rupees, 60,000 he paid. 60,000 he didn't pay. So while cancelling 60,000, what he didn't pay is getting cancelled. But what he paid, we are not giving back. So the 60,000 is a profit. Now, this is the, then after that, we are reissuing. So the same always reissue will be done in the face value. So 12,000 into face value rupees 10. It's increasing by 1 lakh 20,000. And uh, we are giving him at 7 rupees rate that some new person knows for to whom we are reissuing and 84,000. The remaining loss we are cancelling from share forfeiture account. And share forfeiture account still has 24,000 left. Since the temporary name, we are transfer, we are cancelling the temporary name and converting into capital reserve, which is a more permanent name, which will be coming into coming in the balance sheet. This is the entire concept of issue of shares. Now, I took a lot of time to explain this question because from the next question, your concept is clear. You just need to improve your muscle memory and few new terms. From the next question, it becomes cakewalk. Every single question that can be asked in the exam will be covered in these lectures. So for now, I'm leaving you for today. So I want you to go and read these questions and the answers that you wrote and each entry once. You don't need to practice it. Just read through and all recollect what I told you against each entry. And if you have any doubt, go through this lecture. This first lecture is always important. First lecture, every chapter is always important. Once you understand the first lectures, second lectures are usually questions that it becomes easy. So thank you guys. Bye. See you.